day we we were working on understanding the discriminant, and when you got to number when you got to number seven, you had to just start finding me a value for the discriminant, and they had to start telling me what it meant. And I believe when you did number seven, when you did number seven, the discriminant, the, the b squared minus four ac value ended up being a negative number, I believe. Is that right? So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through this. The first thing you need to do is make sure that these values are, all these equations are equal to 0. So I add 10 to make it equal to 0, leaving me with 9n squared minus 3n, negative 8 plus 10 is a positive 2, is equal to 0. So now once it's equal to 0, you can go ahead and find the value of the discriminant. So the discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4ac. In this case, the a value is 9. Can you not do that anywhere, please? The b value is negative 3, and the c value is 2. So in this case, the b value is negative 3, so you need to make sure that you put your negative 3 in parentheses, square it. Minus 4 times the a value, which is 9, times the c value, which is 2. And I believe when you do this, you end up with an answer of negative 63. Do you guys agree with negative 63? I think I told you that's what it should have been the other day. All right, so you get negative 63. And whenever this number ends up being a negative number, what does that mean to you? Two, we call them non-real solutions. But as some of you were just saying, non-real solution means that you have, they're what we call imaginary solutions. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what I would like you guys to do, um, I would like you to write the equation from number 7 into your notes, please. When you write them into your notes... When you write them into your notes, I want you to label the notes. That is not what I meant. Hang up. What I, when, you lab, when you put this into your notes, what I want you to do is label your notes imaginary imaginary solutions. Solutions means, of course, that you are going to be your your discriminant value is uh, is a negative number. So, could I have someone read to me problem number seven again? It was nine n squared minus three n minus eight equals negative 10. All right, and then you had to, remember you had to go through and you had to add 10 to each side. Go ahead and do this in your notes. So you have 9n squared minus 3n. You add together negative 8 and 10. You get 2 is equal to 0. And as we just talked about, you had to calculate the discriminant. So remember the, remember the steps, the, the seven, six steps, excuse me, that you need to follow in order to use the quadratic formula the way that we do in this class. You put the equation equal to zero first. It's already equal to zero. The second thing you need to do is find the value of the discriminant. So that's when you do b squared minus 4ac. So in this case, the b value is negative 3. You square it minus 4 times a, which is 9, <coughs> times c, which is 2, and you end up with negative 63. So the value of the discriminant is negative 63. The next thing you need to do is plug everything into the formula. So x is equal to, the formula says the opposite of the b value. Well, the b value is negative 3. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. What's the discriminant? Negative 63. All right, so you do negative 63 divided by 2 times the a value. 
The A value is 9. 2 times 9 is 18. So we're dividing by 18. The next thing that you need to do is make a tree. So I go over to the side and I make a tree, but this is the problem. It's negative. It's negative 63. So what I would like you to continue to do is ignore the negative and do the tree like you normally do, and we will talk about the negative in just a minute. 63. Help me do a tree. I know it's divisible by... Seven. Divided by 7? It's 9 and 7. 9 and 7? 9 and 7. 7 is prime. What about 9? Nine? 9 is not prime. Three, I keep going. 3 and 3. So I circle my 3s. They're both prime. So that means this. We have a pair of 3s. So watch what I do. I write the 3 down, I leave a little bit of space, and then I write down the leftover 7 underneath the radical sign. So I have 3, a little bit of space, square root of 7. The little bit of space is where we are going to represent the fact that we were taking the square root of a negative number. That square root thing, or excuse me, that negative in front of the square root needs to go right here next to the 3, but we represent that with lowercase letter i. Lowercase letter i. So it reads 3i square root of 7. Why do you think it's an i? Imaginary. i for imaginary. What in the world does that mean? Well, that means to you, whenever you have an i in your answer, it means to you that the parabola that you're talking about does not touch the x-axis. That means you might have a situation where the parabola is way up here, or perhaps the parabola is opening upside down and it just doesn't cross the x-axis. That's what imaginary numbers are. Why do you need to know what imaginary number is? Well, you know what? You might not ever need to know what imaginary number is because you can probably make it through your life without ever knowing about imaginary numbers. But if you choose a field to study in college and in your life that uses, I know one example is electricity. Electricity uses... There are, there are applications for, for using the letter I. So there are places in your life that you could end up using this, but chances are most of you will not ever need to use an I. But now you've seen it. Now you feel a little bit smarter. Bring it home. Show your parents. Make them feel stupid. Yes, Chelsea? What about, wait, isn't, oh, wait, never mind. That's not, I forgot. All right, so what we're going to do now is, is rewrite this as 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 63. We just figured out that that really means what? 3i, the square root of 7, all of this divided by 18. So I taught you one teeny tiny new thing. If you have a negative under your square root sign, you're going to have an I in your answer. The next thing you need to do after you make your tree is to separate it into two fractions. So that means that X is actually equal to, I'm separating the fractions now, 3 over 18 plus or minus 3I radical 7 over 18. The very last thing you do, step number six, is to reduce the fraction. So 3 over 18, if you are unsure what 3 over 18 is, please just let your calculator do it for you. <coughs> 3 divide 18, math, enter, enter, you end up with 1 6. Don't forget your plus or minus. Plus, minus. We have 3i square root of 7 over 18. Ignore both the i and the square root of 7 for just a second. Just worry about the 3 divide 18. What is 3 divide 18 again? 1 6. Now, will these always be the same? Will this 3 18 always be the same as that 3 18? No, it's not going to. It just so happens that in this case it is. So we have a 1 over 6 again, but now we need to remember to go back and include the i and the square root of 7. So we have 1 6 plus... 1i square root of 7 over 6, and then the other answer is 1 6 minus 1i square root of 7 over 6. That 
is the final answer. <coughs> so now what I would like to do is have you go to your quadratic formula sheet, which we were just working on, and let's look at problem number 10. Look at problem number 10.
questions? The rest of this paper, some of them are going to be positive, some of them are going to be negative. I do know that there is a, there is a large number of, of negatives in there, which means you're going to have I's in your answer. Okay? You have the rest of the hour to work on this.